Well, it's a human drama that's gripped Japan for almost a quarter of a century. At the height of the Cold War, North Korean spies abducted at least 13 Japanese nationals. And it is suspected that many, many more Japanese were taken. Tokyo has raised the issue as part of talks with Pyongyang aimed at normalising relations. But negotiators say little progress has been made. Atika Schubert has more. From Tokyo, Japan. This is Seabreeze Radio, 5.89 megahertz on the radio dial. Every night out of Tokyo, they play the same thing. Names of more than 200 Japanese nationals missing, believed abducted by North Korean agents, some more than 30 years ago. The voice of Seabreeze is Kazuhiro Araki, a longtime North Korea watcher. He began the broadcast when he heard reports that many North Koreans were defying the country's totalitarian regime by secretly listening to shortwave radio. He ends each broadcast with a mailing address, urging abductees to smuggle out a letter, a postcard, anything to let their families know they are still alive. Araki acknowledges it can be dangerous. Family members are worried that if the abductees are found listening to the broadcast, they will be severely punished, he said. But they also have high hopes that somewhere their loved ones are listening. Seabreeze Radio also records family messages. North Korea admits to kidnapping Fumiko Hirano's younger sister. They say she is dead, but offers no proof. It's been 27 years since you disappeared, she reads from a letter. We have struggled to save you from North Korea, but we still haven't brought you back. I'm so sorry, she says, barely able to finish reading through the tears. North Korea has admitted to kidnapping more than a dozen Japanese nationals as part of its spy network. Some have been returned. North Korea insists that the others have died, but has yet to offer proof. Many more are suspected of being kidnapped. These stories have made headlines in Japan for years, but in the United States, it is relatively unknown, something a new documentary hopes to change. Abduction, the Megumi Yokota story, opened at the Slam Dance Independent Film Festival last month to rave reviews, winning an audience award. The story of how one family learned 30 years later that their 13-year-old daughter had been kidnapped by North Korean agents. Many, many years. For filmmakers Chris Sheridan and Patty Kim, it was a story too compelling to be ignored. This story is so extraordinary that people's emotions come out in ways that they probably never expected. So we wanted to bring that out as much as we could. Americans need to connect with this story in a way that they will understand it. The film sold out on both its showings. Because most audience members had never heard of the abductions, viewers were kept in suspense as the family learns of their daughter's shocking fate, touching an emotional nerve. I'm a mother, and so it was extremely moving to me. And for so long, to not know and to to have your daughter still inside your heart. That pain and grief is transmitted every night from Tokyo into North Korea. Messages of love and hope borne by radio waves that no borders can keep out. 1948, Mr. Kazumaru Hiramoto. Atika Schubert, CNN, Tokyo.